Welcome back everyone. Now for the last bit of discussion around client-side data fetching, I want to show you how to combine it with pre-rendering. For our example, we're going to look at building an event listing page. Basically, a page that shows a list of events happening around you. Since we want SEO and the list of events be fetched at request time, we're going to use server-side rendering with getServerSideProps function. Once the events have been loaded, we're going to use client-side data fetching to filter the events. Now ideally, both pagination and filtering would take place client-side, but for this example, we're only going to focus on filtering. Back in VS Code, we are again going to make use of JSON server for some mock data. In db.json, I've created an entry called events, which is an array with 10 objects. Each event has an ID, title, description, category, and date. For our example, we're going to fetch this list of 10 events and then client side we are going to filter only the events with a category of sports. Not the most practical data to work with, but it will serve the purpose. In the pages folder, I'm going to create a new file called events.js. Within this page, our first task is to fetch the data required for server-side rendering. Since this is a topic we have already covered, I'm going to go over it fairly quick. Export async function, get server side props, and within the function, const response is equal to await fetch, and the URL is localhost 4000 slash events. Once we have the response, convert it to JSON. So const data is equal to await response.json. Then we're going to return an object which contains props, which is again an object. And we have one property, event list, which we are going to set to data. Now that we have the necessary data, we can define the component to render the list of events. So function event list and from the props we destructure event list for the jsx we are going to return an h1 tag that says list of events and then we are going to map over the event list so event list dot map and for each event we are going to return a div tag whose key prop is equal to event.id and within the div tag, an h2 tag that renders event.id, event.title, event.date and finally the category. Below the h2 tag, in a paragraph tag, we're also going to render event.description. Finally, an HR tag. Once the component is defined, make sure to default export it. Export default event list. If we now start our JSON server, so yarn serve hyphen JSON, and also our Next.js app, yarn dev, and navigate to localhost 3000 slash events. We should see the list of 10 events being displayed. Inspect the network tab and the HTML is in fact pre-rendered. So nothing new here. We are server-side rendering with get server-side props. But after we have rendered the list, we want to allow the user to filter the events based on the category. Now ideally, we would have a side nav with a list of all categories that the user can select to filter the events. 
But to keep this simple, I'm going to add one button that will filter events with sports category. The aim here is to help you understand combining pre-rendering with client-side data fetching and not topics that are more React specific. I'm pretty sure you know how to render a list of categories and handle the click of a button. So back in VS Code, in the event list component JSX, above the heading, I'm going to add a button. The text is sports events. And on click of this button, we are going to call a function called fetch sports events. Let's define this click handler. Const fetch sports events, and this is an async function. Within the function, we fetch the filtered list of events. I'm going to copy paste the two lines of code from get server side props. But in the URL, we can now add some JSON server magic. We specify category is equal to sports as a filter. Now that we have the filter data, we need to render it. However, for that, we need to store the data in a state variable and re-render the component. So at the top, import use state from React. In the component, create a new state variable. Events, the setter function is set events, and the initial value is the event list from get server side props. This, of course, is the prop we have passed in. Inside fetch sports events, we now call the setter function updating the list of events to be rendered. So set events and data. In the JSX, we use events instead of event list. If we now go back to the browser, refresh, we have our list of 10 events. If I click on sports events, we now see only four events with category is equal to sports. And this, as you can see, happens client side. So we have prefetched 10 events for SEO purpose, but then the filtered data fetching takes place client side on click of a button. But at the moment, if I want to share this list of filtered events with a friend, or if I want to bookmark this filtered list of events, it is not possible. The URL is the same for filtered list as well as the entire list of events. We can, however, improve this by making use of shallow routing. With shallow routing, you can update the URL in the browser without running the code inside get server side props. For that, we need to make a couple of changes. So back in VS Code, First, in get server side props, we need to check if the category query parameter is present. So specify the context parameter and extract the query object. From the query object, extract the category parameter. Then build the query string. So const query string is equal to is category present in the URL? If it is, category is equal to sports. If not, it's an empty string. Hard coding sports is in fact intentional. Once we have the query string, append it to the URL. So localhost 4000 slash events question mark dollar curly braces query string. Finally, in the fetch sports events handler, we need to push the category filter to the browser URL. So import use router from next slash router and call it within the component const router is equal to use router. Then within the function router dot push and we push slash events with category 
is equal to sports. The second argument is going to be undefined as it is not necessary. And the last argument, an object where we set shallow to true. Let's now save the file and test it out. On page load of slash events, we have the list of 10 events pre-rendered. If I now click on the sports events button, we filter the events client side. But the URL is now updated as you can see. And because of this, if we now refresh and inspect the document that is downloaded, we see only the list of four filtered sports events. This means I can now share this URL with anyone and they would see the list I am seeing. It also helps with SEO. What is happening is when we reload the page, get server side props is run and now it sees the category query parameter is present. If it is present, the URL fetches the filtered events and passes it into the component as data. And this data is used in our state variable, which is used to render the list of events. As you can see, it is pretty easy to combine pre-rendering with client-side data fetching. Also, this example uses getServerSideProps function, but the idea remains the same for getStaticProps as well. Now at this point, I know you might have a few questions in mind. Let me try and answer those questions. Your first question might be about the filtering function itself. Hey Vishwas, you have fetched all the events in getServerSideProps. So in your fetch sports events function, why don't you simply make use of array.filter to filter the events client side? Now that is a good question to have, but array.filter would only work if we are assuming our entire list of events is fetched at once. I have fetched all 10 events because it is a very small number. In a real world application, you might have 1000 or 10,000 events. In such a scenario, you would be fetching the first 100 events on the initial load. When you have fetched only the first 100 events, if you were to use array.filter, you would be filtering events out of those 100 events and not the entire 10,000 events in your database. You would probably have API pagination and filtering, in which case you would need to make API requests every time to fetch the filtered list of events. That is the reason I decided to make an API call in the fetch sports events function. The second question you might have is probably the more important one here. Hey Vishwas, why are you using query parameters to add filters instead of making use of dynamic pages where the dynamic segment can be a category? You could then make use of context.params and regular routing to achieve the same result, right? Let me tell you, this is an excellent question to have thought about. The answer is yes, you could do that. You can create an events folder with index.js as the root page and then a catch-all route to handle filters as part of the URL itself. So if a user would apply, let's say two filters, the URL could be slash events slash filter one slash filter two. You can extract both these filters and pre-render the data. However, this becomes a problem when you have a lot more filters to work with. Consider a site like Amazon where you have a site nav with 10 to 20 filters for a product. In such a scenario, extracting the filters and mapping the value to the filter type is very, very difficult and probably not even feasible. Imagine a URL like slash product slash filter one slash filter two slash filter three slash filter four till slash F10. 
keeping track that F1 is for brand, F2 is for price, F3 is for color, and so on, just becomes very difficult to manage. The easier way to do all that is to use shallow routing with client-side filtering. Now, if this was a bit difficult to wrap your head around at the moment, please don't worry about it. Once you start working on real projects, you'll soon figure out what is feasible and what is not. When you do that, you can revisit this video to understand better the concept of pre-rendering combined with client-side data fetching and shallow routing. All right, that is pretty much what I wanted to cover in this video. Thank you all for watching. Please do leave a like if you're enjoying the series and I'll see you in the next one.